Hello, I am Shannon Schantz, the Director of Education here at Hopewell School. I hope this video tour gives you more information about our program. Welcome to Hopewell School. As you know, due to COVID this year, we're doing things much different. So I have this video tour for you. And I wanna start out by talking about our program. Our students all come to us from the public schools. We are a service provider for all Coshocton County schools. So once a child qualifies to be on an individualized educational plan, which we also call an IEP, parents and school district and the IEP team can decide what placement is best for the child. And if the team decides that placement here at Hopewell School is best, then that is how we receive our students. So each day it seems like I get calls, I want my child to come to Hopewell. Well, it doesn't work necessarily like that. We work very closely with the public schools and they help place the students here in our building. So we have two school age classrooms and four preschool classrooms here in the building. Our preschool classrooms have 12 students, eight children that are on individualized educational plans, and four typically developing peers. What we have found is that having the typical peers in the classroom benefits the typical peer as well as the child on the IEP. So children that are on IEPs learn from the typical peers, but our typicals learn so much as well. They learn to be accepting of all children, to be more patient with others, and they leave our building here, going off to public school, being open and welcoming to other kids that have disabilities. In our preschool classrooms, we use the creative curriculum, and it's a center-based classroom. So the classrooms have different centers set up. Generally, they have a circle time where they all come together, they sing, they do the calendar, the weather, and then they go into their little center activities. Um, our curriculum is designed to help prepare students for kindergarten. And I feel that when our students do leave here, they are well prepared. We set up our classrooms in a way that we have two classrooms that have our younger kids and two classrooms that have the older kids because what a three-year-old is learning is totally different from what a five-year-old who's getting ready to go to kindergarten is learning about. You know, our three-year-olds were really working on social skills, how to play, how to interact with peers. Uh, and then once we get up to, you know, our fours and fives are getting ready to go to kindergarten, we're focusing in on writing our name, learning our alphabet, learning our numbers, all of the pre-academic skills to take with them to kindergarten. We have two school-age classrooms. Our first school-age classroom has children that are from the kindergarten age all the way up to about age 12 or 13. And in the school-age classroom, they are working on the extended content standards. And with what they extended standards are is the actual content standards that the students are learning in the public schools and it's kind of just modified down to meet their level and there's a lot of hands-on sensory work that they do with the kids to you know help them learn these standards. A lot of one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of hand-over-hand -hand assistance with the students. Whatever the individual child needs is what we provide for them in the classroom as well as the content standards. Our students have a lot of therapy needs. Our therapists are housed here in the building, so we are very lucky to have them right here in the building. So if our teachers or classroom assistants need anything, you know, then go right down the hall and, and ask for that assistance. So the students also have a lot of therapy equipment that they use in the classroom. So on a daily basis, you know, our students that are in wheelchairs, we have them out of their wheelchairs. Some of them have standers and gait trainers, which helps them to walk, um, different adaptive chairs. It's all, um, the classroom is really all designed based on that individual student need. And our second classroom is our older students, and they range from 13 all the way up until when they graduate from our program, which could be their 22nd birthday. Our main focus in this classroom is, you know, preparing them for life outside of school. Our students do a lot of work normally in the community, but this year we're staying here in the building. 
But normally we like to get them out in the community, you know, learn how to go shop at Walmart, make a purchase, you know, follow a shopping list, go out to a restaurant, how to, you know, appropriately sit a restaurant and be out in the community. This year we're trying to take and do as many of those things as possible in the school building. Um, also, we like to interact with the public schools when we can, but once again, this year is a little different and we're not able to do that, but you're gonna try to do some pen pal type activities where we can still like virtually and digitally interact with other peers in the public schools. But normally when we can get out, we go over to the Career Center and there are girls that are in their cosmetology department like to practice on hair and nails and our students go over and they get their hair and nails done. We've done some activities with their cooking department or they do cooking activities with our students as well. So, you know, the big thing is, is just that interaction with others and, you know, what kind of life skills can we, you know, teach our students to prepare them for life outside of school. This is our cafeteria, and generally the students would eat lunch in here, but this year, due to COVID, we're doing things differently, and the students are eating in their classrooms. Our lunches each day come to us from the Career Center. Our cafeteria lady goes over and gets the lunches and brings them back and serves them here in the building. This year, she gets the lunches all ready, she has these carts, and she takes them to each classroom, knocks on the door, the classrooms get their lunches, and then put the cart back out in the hallway for Lynn to come back and pick up. That way Lynn's not going into the classrooms, it's less exposure for her, and she's not going in and out of all of the different rooms. So that's how we're doing lunches this year here in the building. We also have a full-time nurse here in the building. Many of our students have medical needs and she helps take care of all of those throughout the day. Some of our students have feeding tubes and different medical needs, medications throughout the day. And so it's great to have her here so that she can help assist with all of those medical needs. We have our sensory room here in the building, which is a great asset to the students. Um, our students use this room daily. They go in, it's a relaxing environment. We have the water bed that they can lay on, there's vibrating chairs, there's um, light changing objects in there where you can push buttons and the lights change. Our students can get very relaxed in there and so once you're relaxed you can also focus on some of your academic work. So, the teachers will take work in there and they can kind of work on some of their IEP goals while they're, you know, kind of in more of a relaxed setting in the sensory room. This is our home living room and we love having this room. It's kind of a little kitchen area where the classrooms um, bring the students down and they do cooking projects. And even our preschool classes like to cook, so they come in and sit around the table here and do big cooking activities. For our older students, this is a great place to teach them the life skills of cooking. We have the drawers and the cupboards labeled so the students know where to find materials in the kitchen area. And it's a great way to, you know, to be teaching a life skill that they can take with them outside of school. Outside is our playground. We have an adaptive playground for the students and we recently um, was able to purchase a new piece of equipment. It's called a sway fun. It's kind of a, almost like a boat that sways back and forth. The nice thing about it is students in wheelchairs can go up there and you can park a wheelchair on it as well as there's benches to sit on. So there's that combination of mixing our typical peers with our kids that have disabilities and they can play together on this piece of equipment. As you'll see out here on the playground, there's also some adaptive swings and other adaptive pieces of equipment where there's ramps that children in wheelchairs can do the same things that a typical peer who's walking can do. So we are very pleased and happy to have this and to be able to share this playground with the community and for anyone you know who would like to come and use it, it is, it is here and available. 
We use quite a bit of assistive technology here in our building because many of our students do not speak with words. Some of the things that we use are, they're called switches, um, iPads, and our newest piece of technology that we're using in the classrooms is called an eye gaze machine. It is absolutely awesome. How it works is the students, you focus in with your eyes, so you don't, you're not required to touch anything. You can use your eyes as the mouse, and when the machine picks up that you are focused in on what your answer is, then it eventually clicks it. So you will see, just like a mouse moving on a computer screen, it moves from their eyes. Once there's a focus, that's your answer. We're in the very basic beginning stages where they're kind of just clicking pictures right now, but then that can lead up to them clicking words and being able to communicate using their eyes. So we're really excited to have this new piece of equipment and look forward to see where, where it goes with many of our students. Thank you for your time. And if you at any point have any questions, you feel free to contact me here at the school and I would be more than willing to you know, have a conversation or answer any questions that you may have. Thank you and have a great rest of the day.